How's it going everybody? Welcome back to our formula car build. This is part two. Now last time I was undecided between the 125 cc engine and the 1000 cc engine, but after building it to this scale, I'm 100% using the 1000 cc engine. So we're gonna start bracing some more stuff today, add some more bars everywhere, get like the main portion of this cage done, and then possibly start on the engine compartment and the engine mounting after that. If you wanna see more of this build, make sure you subscribe to the channel. You don't wanna miss anything. We're gonna start by adding an upright right here, right before this kink, and then, um, possibly Xing these. So we're just gonna start with uprights on both sides just to make them even, and then we'll uh, see where we go from there. Obviously gonna use one of our scrap pieces. Now we gotta remember that this is at like a four degree angle. A little bit on the short side, Kyle. Oh. Both bars in. Now I think I wanna make this thing stronger around the passenger compartment. So we might do a bunch more bracing, but I do have some one inch tube that I might use um, just to try and save a little bit of weight. I know I'm already gonna be like a couple hundred pounds heavier than most cars of this style just cause I'm using uh, 120 wall DOM. This is inch and a quarter and I have one inch over there as well. Both 120 wall. And that's what I'm building out of just I don't mind being a little bit heavy, I just want to be safe. Now I actually had an opportunity to go to our local sim racing place where they actually had a Formula 1000 shell basically in a sim rig that I was able to sit in and get a feel for it and I knew that I was ultimately on the right path because mine feels a similar way when I sit in it, it's just a little bit tighter. But it did give me some great ideas which you'll see later in this video. So if nothing else, obviously it's gonna be pretty strong. I'm willing to add like a couple hundred pounds to this thing just to make this compartment basically like a, a tumble machine. So if anything hits me from the side, it's gonna stop. If anything rolls or something, I just wanna be feel safe in the car. And honestly, I'm willing to give up a little bit of performance and, and weight, add weight in order to achieve that. So I'm gonna actually brace this piece as well, probably a little bit. That's a good plan actually. Just go from this corner to this corner, this corner to this corner, and just like triangulate this little point right here for whatever reason, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but I feel like that's a good spot to make things look cool. So, do you think I got a little carried away with this? Obviously that's just one side done, but uh, the front end will be plenty strong. I ordered myself a scale, it goes up to 660 pounds, so it'd be, ideally it'd be nice to keep this like this part, this part, and where the engine compartment goes under that weight. I have no idea what the weight should be with me in it or whatever, but I mean like under 2,000 pounds would be nice. I'm not having that much horsepower in this thing. 170 horsepower, CBR 1000. I could turbo it to make up for the lack of that power, but ideally I wouldn't want to because we just want it to be fast with the motor. It'd be nice to just run it NA for a little bit. It's not NA lifestyle, but like budget wise, NA lifestyle is pretty good too sometimes, maybe a little bit. Probably don't get chicks. Now, I'm definitely not perfect at this style of stuff. I'm, I'm learning as I go. I'm not an engineer by any means. I didn't build this out in SolidWorks or the latest bridge builder. I'm just winging it. Mm, that's what we're all about around here, winging it. Now, here's the sucky part. We've got to recreate the other side on this side. Cue the three hour montage. Make it turn the red light on. But you're tilting it. It's gotta be like this. Look, there you go. See flat? I got my little helper in here now. I'm just notching tubes. That went deep in. It did, yeah. See, look. I made it. 
That's a the piece I'm cut out. But you see that I made it like this, and now this will attach into this tube perfectly. See? Yeah. So this one actually belongs over here. And we have to line up with this line right here. Yeah, that might be a Yeah, we just gotta cut another one of those notches in this one to fit in this pipe. Okay. You're you're tilting it. No, it's okay. It's a little filmer boy. Why are you throwing the sharp? Because that's where I have to cut. Well, that felt like it took forever, but it's all braced. That's a lot of bars. How many bars do we put in there? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on each side, not including the top bar, so. Yeah, I took a little bit. Uh, some of the copes aren't perfect here. Um, I'm gonna have to fill like a, a couple little tiny gaps in the framework, but definitely overbuilt. What I wanna build now is a bar that goes across the bottom here, and that's gonna extend to the front here uh, a little bit narrower and that way the bodywork kind of curves under and and drops your feet down a little bit lower than this structure so that there's room for the pedals and that's how i seen it on the formula car when we went to see matt at reboot racing and it totally makes sense that i should drop that floor down a little bit and then even curve this up slightly with a bar as well when i uh, do that that's why i haven't done anything up here yet but we're gonna build the bottom floor structure first um, from the front to midway here, uh, just to give our feet somewhere to go. All right, so I welded these two bars in here. They're not quite parallel. They're about 10 inches wide on this side and about 11 inches wide on that side because I know a Willwood pedal box is actually 10 inches wide. So we needed it a little bit wider than the pedal box so it, it actually goes outwards a little bit. And we're gonna have to sheet it in on the bottom, obviously, if we wanna put our feet there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of something there. I'm gonna try and jump in this thing because I haven't been in it in forever. See if I fit. I don't even know how I'm getting in there, to be honest. Also, thank you, Matt at Reboot Racing for uh giving us a steering wheel so we can, we got something to test fit with it. Anyways, really I need to get into it like you would a car, so I need to get in the top side, not the bottom side. I really hope this table doesn't break. It's probably never rated for this much power. I mean, weight, same thing, weight and power. <laughs> oh my God, it's so tight in here. So she said, I mean, he said, no, I need that plate. It is so not spacious. It's almost too tight. I'm gonna not fit in here at all. Who cares? If your hips are wider than probably 17 inches, they're probably not fitting in here, by the way. If your hips are wider than 16 inches, guess what? You're not fitting in here. Mine are like, I can feel both my hip bones basically on that bar. I probably built it a little bit too narrow. My own fault, but uh, it is what it is now. All right, so visually and like dimensionally, we haven't really built much. We've just kind of braced everything in here. So what I might do is I might move this to the front of the bench and finally get started on like placing the engine back here and possibly building the rear structure that's gonna come out probably way back here. I think our wheelbase is going to be between like 102 and 106 inches. That's what I'm getting online for the wheelbase. So if we're looking at the wheel possibly coming out somewhere up here in the front, that means the rear wheels are all the way back here. You see me? This is where the rear wheels are gonna be. Oh boy.
Well, let's start with a big piece of pipe. And a dead battery. So our rear bars are in place. They're actually tilted in a little bit. And this bar right here is just a temporary placeholder until we build some bridging across here and get the motor mounted and stuff. This is just to hold it in place. Uh, ideally, I think the rear uh, suspension arms are gonna come off of this piece right here somewhere. And then the wing has to bolt to the back too. So that's why I made it a little bit on the uh, long side. Uh, the diff housing is going to go somewhere here and then a chain driven diff. So I have our front hub somewhere around this area right here. Uh, so 10 inches added on to whatever our tip to tip measurement is here. If the center of our wheel is here and the center of our wheel is up there, and I believe the wheels are going to be like 23 inches tall. So. It ain't going to be a bad wheelbase. It's a little on the long side, just picturing it in my head, but sore Formula One car, so suck it. All right, I think I'm gonna try and mount the front side of the engine. I do have this steel sleeve here um, that will fit this bolt. And this steel sleeve actually fits inside our one inch pipe. So I can put that steel sleeve in there. Oh, now I got it stuck. And technically I can weld a piece of this inside of our piece here, uh, bolt that to that, and then I just have to put a pipe from the bottom up to that piece on this side, and that'll be as easy as that on this side to hold the engine. Now the reason that I put that one at an angle and make it land somewhere up here is because on the other side, we've got to make another bar, but uh, this water pump hose is in the way. So this one's gonna have to like curve a little bit and come down. So we're gonna have to actually bend the pipe a little bit. And then we're gonna make it land roughly where the other one is, just so it, nothing looks too off balance. Cause there is another point over here that's the same. So I'll mount the front one here and then we'll have both front ones packed into place. We'll have to build a rear one off this big beefy thing in the bottom and then the engine should just cradle itself on there and that'll be really nice. You know what, I haven't had this much fun in the garage in a long time. Honestly, just put the headphones on. I'm, I'm listening to music. I'm forgetting to film half the time, but I'm having a lot of fun with this project and knowing that it's going to be blistering fast gives me even more motivation. The only thing that's giving me a little bit of anxiety is like, I still gotta make a diff. I still gotta figure out which front steering knuckles I'm gonna use. I still gotta do all the other things, like the fab work is fun and all, but like figure out the little meticulous things, that's the stuff that takes time. Two engine mounts in there. They are not. <laughs> Symmetrical, but they do follow somewhat the same path. This one's got a hook on the top and that one doesn't. And this one lands like, I don't know, three quarters of an inch more forward. It'd be fine. It's just to hold the engine in. No one's gonna see it down there except you guys now, shit.
And the motor's actually offset to one side a little tiny bit. That's why there's a different bend in both sides. But it is level and we should be able to weld tabs on both sides here and weld those tabs to here and then just run a bolt uh, through that piece. Simple, keep it simple. Now we know this season the Honda Power Unit owned Formula One. That's why we went with a Honda Power Unit for ours, obviously not because we already had it already and it was convenient for me. But it should be mounted enough, I hope, that we can pull out all these support structures now. And then I put this plate right here because if we sheet the bottom of this bar in, we'll at least have a quarter inch air gap between the plate and the bottom of the oil pan. So, the other button. Oh, hit myself in the walls. That's a floating power unit. Oh yeah. I'm probably gonna brace the front ones up to the front pipe here. Uh, the rear one is pretty strong down where it is, but this one right here, which was another mount, this one needs to be removable if we want to be able to unbolt it here, unbolt it there, and like pull it out this way. In case of anything, you just, you want to pre-plan and be able to pull the engine out instead of like welding it in place and be like, oh, I gotta cut that bar to get this thing out. <laughs> oh man, I'm so stoked though. This is so cool. Make sure you subscribe for part three. Here's part one.